All right, guys, hopefully in this video, you guys can hear me a little better. I've got all my volumes up. I realized in the last video, for some reason, I was really super quiet, and normally I'm sort of loud. So hopefully this video, you guys can hear me a little better, and you don't have to just 100% rely, rely on headphones if you don't have any. And even if you do have headphones in, you don't have to have all your volumes turned all the way up. So again, my apologies for the last web video. So today, we are moving on and finishing up the Moxie website. We had one previous video for that and then the other lessons we had already done in class. So if you're gone the other day or if you're participating in class, we are wrapping up Moxie today. And when we come back, we will start with our class websites. That should be a little more fun. Recapping what we did the other day, we organized all of our folders even more. We organized our portfolio images mainly into our four subcategories, music, jewelry, food, and fashion. And then we even went a step farther to name all these photos so they made a little more sense. Before they were just kind of a random assortment of numbers and letters, and we don't like that. We need to know what picture we are connecting to. So we named all of them and we also labeled them by size because there is small, medium, and large versions of each one. So if you do not have this done, of course, you probably should toggle back to the first video and accomplish that first. Today's agenda, we are going to use find and replace to update a whole bunch of things on all of our websites, or excuse me, web pages in one fatal swoop. We're going to organize our web pages and rename a whole bunch of those just numbered .htmls we have so we know which page is which. We will create email and external links. We'll then copy and paste all of our links so we don't have to constantly be remaking them. We're gonna link a whole bunch of images so then all of our pages finally connect to each other for our portfolio. And then last but not least, we will cloak some files as well and I'll explain what that is when we get to it. So first of all, if you come into your web pages and you open up any one of our numbered pages, doesn't matter which one, I'm going to open up number 12. Ooh, muffins. So when I open up one of these numbered pages, if you look right up here at the top, you're going to sign, find a text box for our title. And our title was one of the very first things we learned how to do. It was in the head of our code, and it names our web page for when it's in the Internet. So if I was to go down here to the Internet, and it brings up our school site, right here on this tab up here in Internet, it says USD232-USD232Home. This would be the title that is in our code. It is what names our websites. So we are going to name this web page. But unfortunately, all of these are missing a title. All of them say untitled document. And that looks super unprofessional when we actually do send these out on the internet. We don't want untitled floating up there at the top of our internet. There's tons of websites that have that. If you Google it, you'll find a whole bunch of them. It's just a really simple and easy mistake to skip, but we're not going to do that. So for us to fix all these, we're actually going to close this page. And we are going to do this all at once, and it's going to save us a lot of heartache. So again, with all of your pages closed, come up here to Edit. And hopefully your screen is like mine, and the first thing that's highlighted that we can actually click on is Find and Replace. So what find and replace does is it allows us to find something that is a common mistake or on all of your pages and fix it. So then I don't have to go and hunt for untitled document on every single page and retype it. That just takes too long. For us, we can fix this problem in about 10 seconds. This is also great if you were making a web page and when you were done, you realized you misspelled a word constantly over and over on all the pages. It could be someone's last name, or you just had a brain fart and forgot. 
a letter and a word, you can also fix it this way too. So it's for finding one thing on all of your pages and then fixing it. So let's get this set up. The first thing we need to decide is where is it going to find what's wrong. So this little drop down we have several options. Selected text. So if you had a document open and you had a big paragraph highlighted, you could just hunt and have it look in that particular spot. Current and open documents would be just one particular document that you have open. Since we have 20 things, we are going to search in the folder. So we need to find in folder. And then of course we need to tell it which folder. So we're going to click on our little browser folder right here. And then you need to toggle to wherever your Moxie folder is saved. Mine just happens to be right here on this desktop. And select. Then we need to tell it where to look. So we told it the location. Now what is it searching for? Is it searching for source code? So the HTML code we've been typing? Or is it searching for text? So that would be probably more so if you're typing in just like the body of your paragraph. For us, since it's the title, we're actually going to search the source code. And we are looking to find untitled document. Be sure to spell that right, because if you spell it wrong, it's of course going to look for the incorrect spelling. I also capitalized mine too, because that's how it appears. I don't think that really matters, though. And then we're going to choose what we're going to replace with it. So I'm going to replace untitled document with Moxie Photographic Studios, if I can type today. So find and replace is going to look through our Moxie folder in the source code for untitled document. Everywhere it sees that, it's going to replace it with Moxie Photographic Studios. Super easy. Let's hit replace all. So what it's saying now is, hey, I'm going to fix this for you, but um, it's going to, it's going to, sorry, I was reading that and got sidetracked. It's going to fix all of them, but you can't undo it. So say yes. We're fine with that. What's going to happen is a new panel is going to appear down here below your properties panel. And you're going to notice it lists every single one of your pages that did not have a title. So pages 1 through 20 and probably your portfolio page also. If you don't have portfolio, we might have already named it in class. I couldn't remember. And then over here is going to show the code where it fixed it. There's our opening title tag, our closing title tag, and our title is now Moxie Photographic Studios. If I open up one of these pages, opened up 17, check it out. There is our new title. Easy enough. Close out of that page. And then also this, this little search bar or this um, panel down here, it doesn't go away. So we're going to make it go away. I don't like having my screen super cluttered with all these panels. So if you come over here to the far right hand side, you'll see this little triangle pointing downwards with some horizontal lines. If you click on that button, you can close tab group, that whole thing will go away. Okay, let's do some more organizing. We have a whole slew of pages over here. And we are going to bundle them up based upon which group they belong to. Just because in a little bit we're going to link all these pages up. And it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to hunt for each one of these file names. Especially once we've renamed all of these. It's going to be even a little tougher. They're going to get mixed up on us. So we're going to make five folders inside this pages folder. Right click. New folder. First folder is going to be called main. These are going to be all of our main web pages, or excuse me, yeah, web pages that would just be on the top of our banner. 
And inside main, we're going to put what is, services, portfolio, index, contact, and clients. So it should be all the ones that have names. So drag, drop that into main, and always update. Please, please, please always update your pages. Hide that. And then our next four folders are just going to be those subgroups of pictures that we've had. The jewelry. Jewelry is going to contain pages one through five. Always update. Next one's going to be fashion. The fashion folder will have six through ten. Food. Food will have 11 through 15. Update. And last but not least, music. Oops, I created a new file. Better delete that. Music. Music is 16 through 20. Those are the last pages anyway. Update. Alrighty. So we have kind of subcategorized all of our different pages together and this is going to make the rest of this lesson a lot easier a lot faster a lot less hunting and hopefully it'll it'll keep us from making some really simple mistakes too just by focusing in on what we want to work on so what we are going to do next is just like we named all of these images the other day excuse me wrong folder we're going to rename our web pages. We're going to leave the main ones alone. Those, are, those don't need to change. They're pretty straightforward. But let's open up jewelry. Jewelry is one through five. And we are going to name them to match whatever picture they correspond to or whatever topic they correspond to. So I'm going to kind of squeeze this guy over here a little bit. There we go. So page one, let me get this a little smaller too, so you can see everything. There we go. Page one, we are going to name jewelry.html. You have to keep .html when you rename these files. If you don't, Dreamweaver doesn't know if it's a web page, it doesn't know if it's a video, is it a picture, is it a Word document. It has no clue. So you have to keep those extensions on there, guys, or it's going to screw all your stuff up. So let's come in here. Rename it Jewelry. Number two is gold. .html. Number three, red.html. Four, watch.html. Number five, cuff.html. I'll minimize that and I'm going to move on to fashion. Fashion was six Let's get organized there fashion was six through ten now this would be a great time to pause your screen and go ahead and work your way through numbers one through twenty so all of these dot html's that we've organized up I'm going to pause my recording so then I can come back and name all these there's really no point in me doing it step by step with you this is super easy so pause your screen, get these guys on your different HTMLs, and we'll move on to the next part. I'll blow this up nice and big so you guys can see it. Okay, guys, I'm back. I have taken all of these names and renamed the corresponding file number to the name that goes with whatever that page is about. 
So all of fashion, food, jewelry, and music is done. They're in subfolders to kind of help categorize them. And then I also have my main folder with all my main web pages on them. I'm going to kind of hide all those. And I'm going to go into main and open up portfolio. Now the other day in portfolio, you did have some hot spots completed up here. I don't have those, so I'm going to make them real quick. Excuse the beeping. I realize I'm not putting any alternative text on here. I'm just doing that for the sake of time. There we go. Alrighty. So we have our links up here at the top. Fashion, jewelry, food, music are linked up on your page. We're going to come down here to the bottom, down here to this footer. We are going to create an email link out of David Monroe and an external link out of Pro Techniques. Now this is really super easy. There's two ways that you can do it. I'll show you both ways. I'll show you the first way, which I think is a little slower, and the second way, which I think is faster. So let's highlight David Monroe. With David Monroe highlighted, I'm going to come up and find my insert panel. Like little arrows shooting out of some pages. And I'm going to toggle into common. You might already still be in common from the other day, but if you're not, click on that drop down and switch to common. Common are the most used inserts in the insert panel. And hey, check it out. A little bit farther down, there is one for email link. Looks like a little letter on it. Let's click email link. Now this email link window already has David Monroe thrown in the text area because we had it highlighted. All we have to do is type in the email. Info at moxie.com. So instead of doing a href equals and then in quotes mail to colon info at moxie.com ending quote all that jazz you you just have to type in the email. It's so much easier. So we hit OK. Check it out. It is now blue and underlined. It is an email link. So that was what I would kind of consider the slower way. But if you're not comfortable coding by hand, I would obviously go this route. If you would rather just type in the code and be done with it, you can highlight whatever it is you want to be clickable. And then you can come down here to our link window in our text or in our properties panel by where we would point to stuff. Now check it out. There it is. Mail to colon info at moxie.com. That's how we know our link worked. It is correct. It has mail to colon in front of it. If you would rather just type out this entire phrase, feel free to do so. You do not have to go to the insert panel to accomplish this. But you have to always have this colon and mail to for it to work. If not, it just tries to open up info at moxie.com like it's a website, and it's obviously not. So two choices. You can go to the insert panel, or you can just type in mail to colon email address down here at the bottom. So that's how you make email links. Let's do external links. Let's highlight Pro Techniques. Pro Techniques is the fake web designing group that supposedly created this website. If you do decide to go into web design, guys, please already, always throw develop by or created by down at the bottom of your pages. 
with an external link to your website, it's great free advertising. So if someone sees a website and thinks, man, that's cool, I wonder who made that, I want them to make mine, there's your signature down there at the bottom, and they can find you and contact you, and you can make possibly some money if they hire you. So the pro techniques highlighted, same two choices to create our external link. I can come up here to insert. This time we're going to insert hyperlink. Pro techniques is our text. All I have to do is type in where I want it to go. Please remember, always type in HTTP colon to forward slashes and then your web address. Techniques.com. HTTP colon slash slash www.protechniques.com and hit OK. And there it is. There's your link. If I come down here to my properties panel, I could also have typed it right down here in the links text box. Same deal though, I have to type HTTP colon slash slash for this to work. So there's links guys, external and email. Both are super duper easy to create. If you haven't saved in a while, I'd be sure and save. Here is our next step, our next issue, but it's really easy. Let's come into jewelry since it's our first topic and let's open up the jewelry page. I'm going to close this main folder. We need to link every single thing on here. We're going to link the banner. We're going to link our text, which I think we already did in class the other day. This is just a, a newer version on mine, so I haven't accomplished that yet. And then we're going to recreate the email links, sorry, at the bottom of our screen as well as that external link. But there is a faster way to do it. What you can do is if we come back to Portfolio, where we've already accomplished these things, and I click on the banner, so it's selected, I know it's selected because it's got these little boxes here. I can go to Edit Copy, or I can right click and come down to Copy. Then come back to Jewelry, click on my banner so it's selected, and I can paste it straight over the top. And check it out. It pasted those hotspots for me, and those hotspots all have that link included. Saves a ton of time instead of having to create six hotspots on every single banner by hand. So if I can copy a picture with hotspots, guess what else I can copy? I can copy text with hyperlinks. So if I highlight my bottom footer and copy it, I can paste it. Sorry, my screen keeps jumping around. I can paste it straight down here in the bottom. Hold on a second. Mine decided to be funky. Let me try this again. Copy. Paste. There it goes. And there's my links. I can click on them. I can see down here my properties panel that they worked. Over here where you had your hyperlinks to these pages. I'm going to create mine real quick here. You should already have this done. It's just me catching up from an old file. You can also copy and paste these little chunks as well onto the pages that are going to need it. 
So if you come in and open up fashion, you open up food, and you open up music, you can create these links by copying and pasting them. So I need to copy this guy. I can paste him right over the top into music. Look at that little extra return it gives me here. Paste it into food. And paste it into fashion. Apparently my fashion picture is broke. I need to go back and fix that. You can also come back and copy and paste your banner into all of these pages. And this bottom email link, external link. Once you've done that, you can close and save all those pages, but please leave jewelry open. With jewelry open, let's close all these little subfolders here. And I would also like for you to open cuff gold, red, and watch. So open all of those. So we have our entire jewelry section open. So I'm going to pause my screen, but I would like for you to come in and copy and paste the banner with the hyper or with the hotspots onto all four of these pages. I would also like for you to copy this bottom footer into all four of these pages. So I'm going to pause my screen. I'd like for you to do that. Okay, you should have that done. So here I am on all my pages. I have the top banner and I also have the bottom footer information on cuff, gold, red, and watch. Let's come back to jewelry. And we are going to link images. We've linked text. We've done email links, external links, internal links. We've done hotspots. Now we're going to link images. So I'm going to click on this first picture right here of the gold necklace. I know my picture is selected because I have these black boxes. And I'm going to come down here to my properties panel. And in my properties panel, I have my little link option, just like before. It works the exact same way, just like linking a picture when we coded was the same as linking text. We surrounded the picture with our ahref tag. We're doing the same thing in here. So with my link on my picture, I'm going to point to the name it belongs to. So this is my gold necklace. I'm going to point to gold.html. I know it worked because there it is. What we're connecting this medium gold necklace photo to is the gold.html folder or file. That file shows that picture even larger. So this is where large gold is. So in this portfolio, somebody could click on this picture and then see that picture even larger to examine it. So we're going to do the same thing for red, watch, and cuff. I'm going to click on red. I'm going to point to red. I'm going to click on watch. I'm going to link watch to watch.html. I'm going to click on cuff. I'm going to link cuff to cuff.html. If I took this into the internet, Always save. I should be able to click on these photos and have it take me to the page it belongs to. 
excuse me. It shouldn't take me to just a picture of that photo and nothing else. It should take me to the actual web page. So next thing, move on to <clears throat> any of these other pages. It doesn't matter if it's Cuff, Gold, Red, Watch. We're going to do the same thing on all of them. If you click on one of these photos, I'm on Cuff. We also need to link these four tiny little thumbnails. Same principle. I'm going to click on the photo. I know it's selected because of these black dots. And I'm going to link it to the corresponding file. Gold. Red. Watch Cuff. I'm also going to link this big picture of the cuff back to jewelry. So it's going to take me back to my main page. So this takes you back to your category, jewelry. Now we need to do that for the other three pages, gold, red, and watch. Check this out. I can copy this little section of four photos into my next three pages, and it's going to copy all those links, and it's going to make our lives so much easier so we don't have to do this 12 more times. Check out this dotted box that's around these four little guys. This little container, if you hover over it, so you see that kind of grid pattern, click on it. When you see that grid, now I have it selected. I know it's selected because of those black squares. I can right click on it and copy it. Then I can come back into gold, click on that container so it's selected, and paste it over the top. So I just pasted my linked photos on top of my unlinked photos. I know it worked because if I click on my picture, I can check out my properties panel and I'm good to go. Then all I have to do to my gold photo is link it back to my jewelry page. Copy and paste it on to red link this guy back to jewelry. Paste that group onto watches. Link watches back to jewelry. Now every single possible thing on my page is linked to the correct spot. All of my hotspots are on every page. All of my thumbnails are linked to the corresponding photo page. My big photo is linked back to the jewelry page. And I have my email and external links at the bottom. I'm going to close and save all of these pages. And I would like for you to do the same thing for each section. So fashion, food, music. Please come back and do the exact same thing to all them, but you're going to link them to the fashion pages or the food to all the food pages. You're not going to link them back to jewelry. So please come in here and open all four of these up. On your fashion page, you do have all of your banner hotspots, your text links, and then this bottom or email and external links. So you can paste those onto all four photos of fashion and then begin linking up your pictures. My pictures apparently broke, so I need to fix that. So I'm going to pause my video. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to link all my pages and then after that, we will come back and I will show you how to cloak. So again, I'm pausing and we'll come back for one more thing. 
Okay, guys, last portion of the video. We are going to cloak files. So this is the last new thing for today. When we cloak files, what we're basically doing is hiding them from the internet. Whenever you send your website out to be live and viewable by the rest of the world, it's going to take everything that's over here and it's going to package it up and send it with it. So there's going to be times that you have files that you don't want to be a part of that because they don't need to be. They were just something you needed when you created your website, like a Photoshop file or a Word file. You can also cloak web pages that are still in the works that aren't completely constructed yet and then publish them later. So what we're going to do is come into our resources folder. Our resources folder has kind of been our catch-all for some stuff that we just don't need to see all the time. Now, for you guys on the Macs, you are probably going to have a fourth file called Thumbs. For me, I don't have that because I'm on my Dell. To cloak a file, you're going to right-click on it. So I'm right-clicking on Portfolio Images, .psd, the Photoshop file. And about three quarters of the way down, you're going to see something that says cloaking. And in there, you can click the word cloak. Now check out my icon. It has a red slash through it saying, hey, I am not going to send this out with the rest of the website. Think of cloaking like when you play peekaboo with a baby. When you cover your face up, they think you're gone. Or when they cover their face up, they think they're gone. When you cloak something, it's like hiding it with a blanket. It, out of sight, out of mind, but it is still there. So these are still accessible. You can still edit and manipulate them. It's not like you're just locking them completely. But cloak prevents it from being sent out with everything else to the internet. Please cloak all of the files inside of resources except for styles.css. Styles.css is actually really super important. We don't want to cloak that. Styles is what is controlling kind of the theme of all of our pages so they all match. We just threw it into resources just so we didn't have to see it and maneuver around it. So please do not cloak styles, but cloak the other files inside of resources. All right, guys, please go live on the internet with your site. Check it out, publish it. Make sure that you can toggle between all of your pages and photos in portfolio. And call me over when you're done so I can check it out. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video.